Hi, Sisrin here with another video, and today we are going to be covering Blight. And I've done a few Blight videos, and they've been fairly successful, and it's basically how to never fail a Blight again. Normally, I just talk to you guys about minion towers, but I want to share some new strategies and help you guys out a little bit. So, there are different things you can do for this, but I'm a big fan of two things. So you have a very, very cheap anoint for scout tower range. And a lot of people don't even know that you can anoint rings, but these are really, really nice. Whenever there's no minion immunes, it's so incredibly easy to just spam minion towers. And if you don't really, really get the system or you're finding client complicated, that's a really good way. Especially if you have a build yourself that can kill some minion immunes, just spamming minion towers is really good. And we will show that strategy as well. But there's another thing. It's going to be a slightly more complicated strategy, but it is also really nice. Now, there's another anoint as well that's really nice, and that is Seismic Towers have increased stun duration. And these can be really nice. Now, I still use uh, the stun towers even without stun duration, and especially if you don't want to anoint them up in a certain way that makes it easier, um, th this is a really, really good way to go about it. So I'm not going to be covering the like super maps, just I don't actually have any right now. They're mostly just spamming stun towers to be honest. But um, I'm going to do a tier 15 and a tier 14 and we'll show the two different tactics. Now you can anoint maps as well. So if you want it to be really really easy, you can do three um, reduced cost. Or if you want a spicier one, you can do three blue and then you have varieties are lucky. So it'll choose, it'll roll it twice for the reward and it'll take the best ones. Now, you can roll them as well and make them harder. Um, we can just throw in some random stuff. It doesn't really matter. The only thing that generally does make them harder would be, um, you know, making them a lot tankier. That would be very bad. Now, I have the 60% reduced cost in upgrading towers. And this makes it so easy that your build pretty much doesn't matter at this point. Um, if you do get a lot of minion immunes, you might have to change your strategy. Well, let's say that we open this and there's no minion immunes, then we're going to have a very easy time. Perfect. That's exactly what happened. We have no minion immunes, so I can actually try just not attacking at all. So what I like to do is I build an empowering tower and I upgrade it two times. The reason for that is that if I upgrade it a third time, it stops affecting towers and either debuffs the monsters or affects me. Now I can just upgrade the minion tower. It's the right path to upgrade. And you can see that they're already just starting to slaughter things in the distance. Nothing in this is minion immune. So I have a like guaranteed success here. I cannot possibly fail this. Um, if there were minion immunes, what I really like is I would put down a stun tower and a frost tower pretty close to the minions. And then I would focus on killing the minion immunes myself. We can do another one here. Whoops. Stupid button. I'm on standard, so I don't have my normal atlas. And then now, um, there's a few things to explain. First, how do you get blight maps? Well, you get them just by doing blights in a normal map. And um, every time you click the oil reward, you have a chance that you will get uh, an actual map. And once you kill a tier 14, 15, or 16, maybe it's, I think it's at least 14 plus, but uh, I, I don't think uh, 13s can give you Blight Ravage maps. Maybe it is even only 16. Uh, I think I've only had like 7 or 8. But either way, you can get Blight Ravage maps now, which can be anointed 9 times. And the easiest thing for that is just anointing the three first oils. The uh, Sepia, the Clear, and the Amber ones, or whatever. So... You see, there's probably going to be a third thing down here that we're going to have to defend as well at some point, but I can just keep building these and they're going to take care of everything. Now, if you want to get spicy, it is very big value having a frost tower on each side. So we can do that on each one. These, so we can have one here as well. This is very big value just to make sure that things are... It's weird that that almost went in. Um, but yeah. So that's pretty much the strategy. Uh, if the, if a third pump appears, we would build one there. Now, something very important to know. Watch what happens now. So obviously, clearly, they're insta-clearing everything, right? Everything is dying. But now, my towers are no longer attacking. That's because some one and a half screens away. So look how close they get. Now, obviously, you see they all get instantly wiped out when I get close. 
But that means that a strategy of I'm going to build towers here while defending this myself does in fact not work. So you have to be very, very careful of that. It's not very intuitive, nor does the game tell you that anywhere. But if you are one and a half screens away from the towers, they do stop attacking. I think this is terrible and it is the number one thing I would absolutely love change with Blight. Because the monsters move when I'm not looking at them. Why do my towers not do things? I don't know if it's to save resources uh, or if it's just a leftover thing for saving resources. But it is incredibly frustrating. But uh, yeah, as you can see, I don't think I've attacked this entire... Um, I don't think I've attacked this entire Blight. So I could have technically done this on a support build. I'm just down here in the middle. I'm just chucking down more minion towers and it's incredibly easy. Uh, I know a lot of people like, you know, stun towers with um, meteor towers. Meteor towers are incredibly strong. That was a close one. Again, you see like even going somewhere further away to build towers will make these ones all stop attacking. That was a very, very close one. I honestly thought that went in. So you don't want to spend too much time um, far away. But now, as long as I stand here, I honestly don't think I even have to build anything else. And we could technically go AFK for the last minute. This guy does give a ton of resources, but it's also kind of scary when he goes through because each one of those uniques count as uh, 10, 10 lives lost. But yeah, we can just AFK. I don't think I attacked this entire blight. So you can see the minion strategy is still incredibly strong. Um, and you want to just stand close to the pump if you ever are, and I'll show this on the next map, if you ever are in a scenario where nothing spawns close to the pump, you're going to have to be very proactive on your damage, run out, meet bosses, build a lot of stun and slow towers. It's very hard uh, when things aren't spawning close to the pump. Now, thankfully, usually they do, but I did have an ivory tower that I actually lost because I just had to end up running so much between the two. And the towers didn't help at all because they were, let's say, it was the equivalent of if I could only build towers here and here. And it was very bad. So there are some maps that you do just get completely screwed over on. Obviously on this one, uh, Coral Ruins was a really nice layout. We it didn't have to attack at all. So I could have done this with you know, a level one character. Um, either way, I don't care about the rewards. This is on standard. So I will go show you how I would do a more rewarding map. Um, so this would be, this is the map that we had the chests are lucky and it has some like random stuff rolled on it so now i can still do the minion strategy in this but it will um it will be a little bit scarier because it's so effective when we can just spam towers but we also like it depends a little bit on the layout so we'll take take a look at that this is obviously a very different map and we have to check how many immunes we have like if you do have a ton of stun immunes you don't want to build a ton of stun so we only have two stun immunes, that's fine. We are going to have to attack ourselves in this. Explosive arrow, obviously a little rough um, for things like that. And honestly, in the start here, I don't really have a large amount of tower space. So I'm just going to slam down a stun one here. And I'm going to wait with building that. I don't really want to build anything there. I think doorways kind of make it awkward. But uh, we'll see. I'm going to attack in my star here. And we'll, we'll show a different way of building. Right, now it's gotten a few more lanes and we're starting to see some stuff here. So I can do a frost tower here. I can do another stun tower here. And now I'm going to build an empowering tower here. We again do it up to level three. And we're going to wait with attacking and you'll sort of see why this can be really nice. We can have another stun tower here. But you see that we have a lot less stuff to build with. Now, for the stun immune bosses, you have to be very, very proactive. They're not going to get stunned. They will get slowed, but you will either need minion damage towers to bring them down, meteor towers to bring them down. Uh, but you can see here with the stun and freeze tower, they're not really moving past there. So if you had no stun immunes in this, this is also a free way of doing it. And this, the stun immune, this ends up being the best one in the blight ravaged ones because they just have so much HP. You're never going to like damage them down in time. But as you can see, this would even happen to bosses. You can do another stun tower here, but we are going to save. So we're going to build over here. We can go look at the boss real quick here as well. You can see the boss is just permanently stunned. If we put down some like damage help, it'll die very, very quickly. Um, and it'll just stand in place. So we're going to do a stun tower here. We're going to 
do a... Oh, now I wish I'd done an Empower Totem there. But um, we'll do a Frost one there. We'll do an Empowered here. You have to make sure that it hits it. That is pretty important. Now you can see I walked a little bit too far away. So they actually walked through the stun part. That can be mitigated in our case by putting a second stun tower here. Um, that's just because I walked through too far away. If the game operated the way I think it should, uh, they should obviously have been perma stunned. But for whatever reason, when we're too far away, nothing happens. And we have no stun immunes yet either, so it's not like it was stun immunes causing that. You can see now it's just going to bunch up more and more. And now since we have stun immunes, having some cold flows here, and even you could build the glacial tower that cases them in. That could be really, really nice for the bosses. But yeah. Um... The proxy shields as well can be really, really bad. You'll see it's very, very easy to kill the rest. And you could also do you know, just an extra minion tower to help with some damage. Meteor tower, really, really good when things are stunned as well. I don't even think this can hit at an angle properly. Yeah, they can barely hit. Now, obviously, you are going to have to adapt uh, to the map you're doing and change things. I just wanted to show you some strong combos. Like obviously, we've shown the minion one before, but I really wanted to show how strong the stun towers are, the freeze towers, and how empowering totems are just incredibly strong. So obviously, now we are going to start having stun immune bosses and stuff, so we will have to attack ourselves. But uh, pretty good ways of doing it. And this is with no cost reduction. I would say that with either of these strategies and three orange oils, you can never file a blight map again with these strategies. But if you are going for more rewards, you do want to sometimes have a stronger build, able to handle some things, and hopefully this helps. Obviously, we could go around building a bunch of stuff right now, but I'm more worried that going to one side is going to start leaking things than I am about anything going through my defenses. So I'd rather just run up here, drop some totems, and then run back to make sure that they're in range of my totems being active. Um, I think that's pretty much it. As you can see, very good success here. And uh, thanks for watching. I hope the video helps. And yeah, sub if you liked the video, let me know what you think, and try to die less than I do.